Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the Bible study portion of RT Ministries. And we're continuing through John, the book of John. Um, hope you jump on board again. This is, uh, if you jump on board, we can get through the whole New Testament together. And, you know, learn together. And Verse by verse is the way to go. Alright, last week we ended with uh, John 10, verse 11. Jesus ended by saying, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, Jesus is the good shepherd. God is the only one who is good. This is the great I am statement again. He claims to be God. He's the only good shepherd, so he can be, he's the only one who could be God. Because only God is good. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And Jesus Christ laid down his life for you. If you come to him, he laid down his life for you. He has the power to save. Alright, let's pick it up with John chapter 10, verse 12. Okay, after he said... The good shepherd, he lays down his life. 12, he said, he who, is hired, he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. Okay? Now, a hired hand will not take care of the, your property like you would. You know, if you hire somebody, they lot, some care, some don't, but they will not take care of the sheep like a, one who owns a sheep would. And Jesus is the good shepherd. When he sees the wolf coming, he leaves and flees. The hired hand leaves and flees. Nobody cares for you and loves you like Jesus Christ. You know, a hired hand is a false teacher. You have a false teacher preaching. He doesn't care about you. He only cares about himself. He has nothing for the sheep because he really is a hired hand. He's not, he's not brought to you by, you know... By God, you know, God calls teachers. I've been called by God to preach and teach. That's what I'm doing. I have been called by God, but there's plenty of people out there that are hired hands. They don't care about you. They don't care about God, but they're standing in pulpits. There's other people that are not standing in pulpits that are hired hands too. They don't care about you. But the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He'll protect the sheep. That's the, what it's saying here. He'll protect you. He won't leave when the wolf comes. Satan wants to destroy all Christians. That's what he wants to do. He wants to trip you up. But God will take care of you. He's the good shepherd. You don't have to be afraid of Satan. The Bible says to be afraid of God, right? To fear God, not Satan. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. This is what happens when a, when a hired hand is a preacher or a teacher. The wolf comes and devours all of them, even while they're preaching. A lot of churches out there now are devoured already. And they don't even know it. 13. He flees because he's a hired hand and not concerned about the sheep. There you go. I am concerned about the sheep. I want people to learn. I want people to, to grow in Christ. That's why we go verse by verse through the whole Bible. You have to, if you go verse by verse through the whole Bible, you have to hit the verses you don't like. You have to hit all the verses. Jesus Christ is the true good shepherd. And he doesn't leave the flock. He protects them all the way up until you're dead. 14, he says it again. I am the good shepherd. Same verse he said before. I am God, the good shepherd. He's the only one who's good because God is only good. And I know my own. There you go. Jesus knows his own. If you are saved, if you are born again, he knows you by name. And he's protecting you like the good shepherd. And my own know me. So not only does he know you, you know him. You cannot be led astray by false teachers. And there are a lot of false teachers out there. A lot of false teachers. Satan sends his own out there. But you cannot be led astray by them because you only know the good shepherd's voice. 15. Even as the Father knows me and I know the Father, so the Father knows Christ and Christ knows the Father. There's a relationship there. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And he's going to lay down his life soon. He's going to pay the debt on the cross. The cross is the single most important thing about the Christian life and about Christianity because Jesus, when he lays down his life on the cross, he paid the debt for you, the full debt. He said it's finished. There's people out there saying, you know, that they don't, they don't know if they're truly saved and they don't, you know, they're, they're just confused about that. And look, if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven past, present, and future. You can trust Jesus Christ. This is, this is, this is, Trusting him. You trust Jesus Christ to save you. You trust Jesus Christ that when you're laying on your deathbed or you die quickly, 
that he will, he will intercede for you when you die. The first thing you're going to see is the Lord. He will protect you from the wrath to come. He will save you. He will take you to heaven. And by the way, if people don't know Christ, I don't care who you are around this world, if you do not come to Christ, you do not have the Good Shepherd and you are not saved and you will pay for your own sins in hell. 16, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. Okay, and the other sheep, that's Gentiles, that's me and you. Outside the Jewish race is Gentiles, so he has other sheep that's coming in, and I was one of them, and you are one of them. We are the other sheep. I must bring them also. And he says he's going to bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Isn't that nice? Or one flock with one shepherd, with the Jews, the true Jew out there is the one who is circumcised inwardly in the heart, born again. So if you're born again, you're a true Jew. A true Jew is not one outwardly. It's one inwardly. And we're all one flock. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. Okay? He's in perfect relationship with the Father. The Father loves him. He loves the Lord. I love the Father. I'm in relationship with the Father because of Jesus Christ, not because of my own works or my own. I'm not good. There's nothing good inside me but the Lord, and the Lord has guided me and is still guiding me. But he, Jesus Christ, was sent to lay down his life for the sheep. 18. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. Okay, Jesus made this choice. Him and the Father in eternity passed, Made the choice, Jesus made the choice to be the sacrifice, to submit to the Father, to be the sacrifice. You know, sacrifice had to be done. The debt, the debt of all who are going to be saved had to be paid. The only reason you can go to heaven is because Jesus paid the debt. If your debt isn't paid, that's why you end up in hell, because your debt is still there. And you now are in front of a righteous, holy, just God, and you will get justice. You know, and then he said, I have authority to lay it down, I have authority to take up again. So Jesus has full authority to do it all. By the way, nobody in this world has other authority than Christ. He has all authority. All the other cults and isms out there is all man-made ideas to bypass Jesus Christ. You know, you got things like psychology, tries to fix people's life without God. It's a, God is absent, so... Again, psychology has no answers. That's why they give you pills. But the Bible does have answers. This command I received from my father. So his father told him, he has all authority. All, everything's going to be subject under Christ. And the Bible says, except the father. But everything is going to be subject to him. So everything in this world is going to be subject to him. 19, a division occurred again among the Jews because of these words. And this is what happens. When you preach Jesus Christ, a division always happens because there's some that believe and some that don't. Once that happens, it divides. Jesus said he came to divide. It shouldn't be a shock to people. Jesus divides. He always has and always will. 20, many of them were saying he has a demon and insane. Okay, some people said he had a demon and is insane. There's some, some people that they think, when you talk about Jesus Christ, you talk about him coming back from the dead, you talk about him saving you, they think you're insane too. You're insane to believe a 2,000-year-old book, but don't be, don't be discouraged because you're in good company. All, you're in good company, all the prophets, the disciples, and all the saved people of the past. So hang tight and hold true to the gospel and hold true to the Bible because God doesn't change. The Bible was good 2,000 years ago. It's, it'll be good 2,000 years from now because he doesn't change. People change, but God doesn't. So some people said he had demons saying, why do you listen to him? Okay? Some people are going to, if you follow Christ, somebody's going to say you're insane to do it. You've got to love Jesus Christ more than you love people. Don't be a people pleaser. This world has some power on people. Don't be a people pleaser because these people aren't going to do you any good someday. But Jesus will. 21 others are saying. These are not the sayings of one demon possessed. And these were people losing, using their logic. He said, look, you're calling them demon possessed, but these are what he's saying is not the saying of somebody that's nuts or demon possessed. Or crazy. A demon cannot open the eyes of the blind, can he? And that's true, right? A demon can't open the eyes of the blind. Only God can do that. Because he has to recreate the eye. Only God has that power. He's the creator. 22. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place in Jerusalem. 23. 
It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So Jesus never hid himself. He came into the temple. 24. The Jews then gathered around him and were saying to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Now Jesus was plain. Again, people don't listen. You can tell somebody, somebody something about Christ and they just don't listen. He was plain. He never hid anything. He was plain and taught out in the open. 25, Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. This is the problem. It's not that Jesus didn't tell them. It's that they didn't believe because he did tell them. They do not believe. They're blind to it. And by the way, the Bible teaches that everybody's dead in their trespasses and sins, and they're blind to their own sin. Because most people think they're pretty good, right? Problem with people is they think they're good. Oh, I'm pretty good, and I think I'll, you know, God will outweigh my bad and good. I think I'm pretty good. The problem is the scales have tipped to one side. You're all bad. That's what the Bible says. Everybody's bad. There's no good. There's no one good. No, not one. According to Romans, no, not one. So everybody's scales is, are severely tipped to one side. You're all bad. Jesus said to them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. And he's right. Everything he did, he did all the miracles, testified that he come from God. There's nothing more he could say to people. Believe, you know, people's Sin is a consequence that, that, that God will punish people for, but their ultimate, ultimate sin is unbelief. They just refuse to believe. And everybody will be condemned because of that. But there's good news. <laughs> you can be saved no matter what you've done. doesn't matter how much sin you've committed. You can be saved. 26. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. Okay, Jesus said you... <laughs> the reason you don't believe is because you're not my sheep. Remember, this is the part... Uh, election where God draws people to himself. God chose people to be saved. That's part of the Bible, and I know a lot of people don't like it, but it's part of the Bible. You cannot get by that. He said, you don't believe because you're not part of my sheep. In other words, you don't believe because I haven't chose you. 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I love this. I, my sheep hear my voice. If you are Jesus' sheep, you'll hear his voice. Not only that, you'll, Jesus knows them. He says, I know who all my sheep are. And they follow me. Listen, if you're saved, if you're born, truly born again, you will follow Jesus Christ. You will follow him, you'll follow him, you'll follow him. Why? Because they hear his voice and Jesus knows them and they follow the one they hear. People are dead in their trespasses and sin. They love their sin rather than light. They love darkness rather than light. So they do not follow him. They do not hear him. They do not know him. 28, and I give, them, and I give eternal life to them. Look, if you're sheep, he's already given you eternal life. Eternal life is not a span of time. All people live forever. If you're unsaved, you're going to live forever. If you're saved, you're going to live forever. All people who have ever been born live forever. Eternal life is a relationship. The Bible says eternal life is to know the one and only true God. If you come into relationship with Jesus Christ, you've come into relation, you have eternal life because you come into relationship with the one and only true God. I give them eternal life. I give eternal life to them and... There's another and, and they will never perish. <laughs> if he gives you eternal life, that means he saved you. You are permanently saved for eternity. And no one will snatch him out of my hand. And I think I'll stop here for this one. He said they will never perish. Why ain't you going to perish? Because Jesus saved you. He has the power to forgive sins. He paid your price. On that cross, he paid your price. He came back from the dead. Because he came back from the dead, you can come back from the dead. And no one will snatch him out of my hands. a wonderful promise because everybody thinks Satan's so powerful in this world. He's nothing to God. Nobody can snatch anybody out of Christ's hands. Nobody can snatch him out of my hands. You are safe. You can trust the one who saved you. So I don't know how else I can say. The Christians in America and all around the world in 2017, in September of 2017, to relax and trust the Lord. <laughs> Relish your joyfulness that you have and your security that you have in Jesus Christ because nobody can snatch you out of his hand. You're safe. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.